Good morning, good afternoon, good evening guys, wherever you are on this beautiful world and if you're watching this YouTube video, welcome to the Bitcoin Family YouTube channel for the newcomers. My name is Didi, believing in the peaceful revolution, also referred to as Bitcoin guys. Um, and today a TA video, but a really cool TA video because it's like more mindset TA video than it's like price wise TA video. Yeah, and I might confuse you now by this saying this, but uh, the last couple of charts in this video will show you how our mindset was the right mindset to be able to accumulate a shitload of bitcoins in the way we did so please watch this complete video i know the first part may be a little bit boring about the price but the end watch it now let's quickly jump into this first three charts to get them over it bam over here this is the first one um, as you know this is the one day chart of bitcoin yesterday i told you guys yes this dotted line could be the support line we broke that line you see here there bam it was broken now we um, are now, when you break these lines, going to the next level of support. And that would be that green line over here. And that green line is dollar line is the extension if you would move like this. So we could be touching that green line somewhere over there in a couple of days, around 23K. And then we should uh, find some support at those levels. The same levels, as you can see in the right side of the chart, is the volume. Look, this volume over there is huge. And that's the volume level that we will find support. And before that, we are going to try to break the 24 and 25k again in my honest opinion now if we zoom out we get the weekly chart and on that weekly chart and um, we can see that everything is still fine it's like not being freaking out about anything because we can see that we had a new high we had a bottom in my opinion we had a new high we will have a higher low and then a higher high and a higher low some might say yeah we already had a high there and this is the low there and a high 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 same we will get the higher low in my opinion the higher low could be around this level why because look to the left we can see there's like support over there resistance over there resistance over here the 21k could be the higher low um, in my opinion but of course I hope it will be a little bit higher and then after the higher low we will create a new higher high and it will be above the 200 weekly moving average again and that's how we continue to struggle out of that bear market into this new massive bull market guys if you want to trade all of these charts by the way then go download the videos and use the links that by that you support me and by that i can support again charities and all other stuff that you see that i do in the videos like building the school in mexico for example now um, if you click those links you go to bybit and in my bybit i have a personal page where you can see which exclusive rewards and bonuses are for the grabs like 30 dollars for signing up 30k bonus uh, depending on how much you uh, deposit you don't get fees on spot trading and there's a lucky draw and a trading combination and many more offers on Bible. You only need to fill your email and uh, whatever email it can be, non-KYC, like anonymous, and a password, and you create an account and you can get your welcome gifts over there. Now, zooming out. We are zooming out now to the monthly chart. On this monthly chart, we can see two things. In my opinion, the two things that are important is like, like we have the resistance over here at red line. We wicked into it. This candle, last month's candle, was indecisive. An indecisive doji, it is up to me, because it's a very small body, two wicks, same size. The January was explosive, indecisive, and now March is the candle that is going to show us the direction. Are we going to go up and break that line, 25,000, or are we going to come down and retest, for example, at 21K again? That is what this month march is gonna do in my opinion we are going to go up and why look to the bottom look to the macd of course bearish 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 less bearish less bearish less bearish less bearish less bearish and then we will flip into green again and when we flip into green that's mostly when this beautiful blue line crosses that red line again uh, and that can happen in march or april so that's two beautiful exciting months coming up and let's try to break 25k in march that would be a beautiful play all the way up to 28k now it is now time uh, for us to jump into those uh, couple of charts that will help me to explain why i think that you should do the same that we did okay now let's go for those charts to uh, to show you what i mean because else i'm brabbling a line and the video will become too long again so we will go to this one first now in this chart, this is the beginning of our discussion. This discussion, <laughs> open discussion. You can uh, answer down below by giving a comment, but this is uh, what we are going to do. If you look at Bitcoin as a store of value, then we can always calculate in dollars, 
but let's calculate the other way around. Let's calculate in Bitcoin. And let's see that from the moment in 2016, 17, when we went all in, how other assets did in comparison to Bitcoin. That is the thing that is very um, important to me. Because I see Bitcoin as my store of value, as my core capital, as my core currencies. I use it for all of those things. So since 2016, 17 over here, we were all in. If we would have not gone all in into Bitcoin, and we would compare all these other assets here on the bottom, like fiat currencies as like the Turkish Lira, Argentina Pesa, the US dollar, gold, US real estate, or S&P 500, which means if I would have held, if I would have held our house, real estate, or if I held our gold over there, or if I would have held dollar over there, then in comparison to Bitcoin, I would, would have lost a shitload of buying power. If Bitcoin now would be 100% still, it is from that line, then we can see that now, for example, the S&P 500 would only be left 5.5%. My house would only be left 3.8%. 2.8% the dollars or the euros. So if I would have held one of these assets down here, I would, lost, I would have lost a shitload of buying power. It would not be a store of value, it would be a store of disaster. It would be a huge store of disaster. Now, and it shows it a little bit clearer on this chart. This chart shows you exactly the same, but not just gold. This chart is comparing you investing $1 in gold or in Bitcoin 13.4 years ago. So 13.4 years, you invested $1 in gold or in Bitcoin. That's in the beginning of Bitcoin. That would be now $30 million. If you, if you would have invested one dollar in gold, it would now be one dollar seventy-five. As being a huge millionaire versus like being able to buy a candy bar. That is the huge difference. That's why I am in Bitcoin. And now my situation was the house. Bam! These are the home prices in Palo Alto. If you know, if the ones that don't know it, that's the city uh, where Silicon Valley is based. Um, and a guy started to investigate how much did the home prices in dollars compared to Bitcoin changed from each other. Now, if you measure the home prices in US dollars, the average price of a house in Palo Alto has increased by 117.9% in less than 10 years. However, if you measure those in Bitcoins, the average price of a house in Palo Alto has decreased by 99.96%. So also there, people holding their dollars on the bank account are not able to buy, they're only able to buy 50% of the house that they would be able to buy 10 years ago. And in Bitcoin, they would be able to buy two of those houses now um, if they would have stayed in Bitcoin. That is the big difference, guys, between um, Bitcoin and dollar. And yes, you might say, yeah, Palo Alto, maybe that's only one thing. No, it's not only Palo Alto, it's more, more, it's like the whole US, guys. This is the whole US here. U.S. real estate, home prices versus Bitcoin. How clear do you want to see it? The houses have been getting 10 times cheaper every halving if you express it in Bitcoin. It's 10 times cheaper every halving if you express the house price in Bitcoin. And you know that is going to continue all the way to 2030 and in 2040. And the last Bitcoin will be mined in 2140. So maybe it will continue way more longer than we think at the moment. But let that soak in a little bit. Understand it. Every US house has been getting 10 times cheaper every halving if you express it in Bitcoin. If you now still don't understand why to be in Bitcoin completely, then I don't know anymore. Now this is the chart that shows you how much money there is in the world. And as you can see on this chart, there is a shitload of money in this world. It's almost 900 trillion in total. And of which is only 2 trillion in crypto. 7 trillion is in coins and notes. Gold has 12 trillion. The derivatives market 16 trillion. Here 59 trillion M1, M0 plus current accounts. The stock market is 95 trillion, oil 104 trillion, 125, and then debt and real estate 277 and 281. Nah, the debt has never been that high. 
But of all this money that you can see on this chart, all of this, only two trillion is in Bitcoin. Only two trillion. And now looking back to those other charts, that Bitcoin has outperformed every asset out there in the world. Don't you think or believe that the people that now have a shitload in all of these things over here will slowly start to diversify more and more into cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin because they understand that Bitcoin is a store of value and making more profit for them than gold or derivatives or any other thing that you can see on this chart. That is the question. For me, it's completely clear. Smart money will come in more and more. That's what we are seeing already. You can see the Bitcoin wallets growing in value. So it's bigger Bitcoin wallets and the smaller wallets are becoming less and less. The retail people are selling to those bigger, bigger Bitcoin wallets because they are afraid to lose and they understand more and more the power of Bitcoin as a store of value, but also as a profit-making machine. That's why we went all in. That's why we sold the house, that we sold the company, that we sold the kids' toys, the bikes, everything that we owned, even my pension fund, because we understood that all of this was not making us happy anymore, For first of all. Second of all, all of that was disappearing into thin air as there was a shitload of money being printed, so it became like almost not valuable anymore to us. And then the third thing, we believed in this peaceful revolution that was going to disrupt this monetary system that is so dishonest and making people poorer and poorer and poorer. And we really believed that Bitcoin was a tool for that peaceful revolution. And that's why we went full into Bitcoin. Because we knew it was deflationary. We knew that in the end people would start to understand Bitcoin, also the suits, also the governments, and that it would become something very important in our world. And that's what we are seeing now. Bitcoin is becoming one of the biggest players in the new monetary system that's being built in those countries that had so much inflation that they couldn't handle the amounts of bills anymore to buy groceries. Bitcoin is saving those countries at the moment, in my opinion, and I think it will be bigger and bigger and bigger. Now, uh, that was everything for today. I hope you really enjoyed this Peaceful Revolution video. I hope you really understand the charts that I just showed you. If you don't understand, then comment down below and I will find and dig up more charts that will make it more clear to you guys. Uh, if you do understand, and then also leave down below what you think about the charts. Thank you for watching. Uh, give it a thumbs up, share with your friends and family, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment. Thank you for watching and see you tomorrow again. Bam.